All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to discuss a very important theorem about zeros of polynomials. And this is a theorem, the statement is quite long, but really the beauty is in all its applications. So it's called the rational roots theorem. And what it says is, if a polynomial has a rational root, namely a zero that's a fraction, then it needs to have a very specific structure. It cannot be anything you want. And kind of similar to the quadratic formula, which gives you kind of formula for the roots of uh, a polynomial, if they exist. So. The first part is just gibberish. It's really the second part that's important. So let, suppose we have given integers. So a zero up to a n, maybe a zero, a one up to a n. Be given integers. And moreover, assume the leading term is non-zero and the ending term, the constant term is non-zero. So a zero is non-zero, a n is non-zero. And suppose the following polynomial, so the polynomial with coefficients a naught up to a n, so a n x to the n plus dot 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 plus a one x plus a naught has a zero that is rational. So in other words, it has a rational root that is a zero of the form x equals p over q, and of course p and q are integers, integers q is non-zero, and moreover, of course, if you find two-fourths, you should just say one-half, so p and q have no factors in common, so p and q have no common factors. So again, so far again, just gibberish. Suppose you have a polynomial and you know it has a root that's a fraction. Now comes the interesting thing. What this theorem says is x cannot just be a random root. There needs to be some very specific conditions on p and q, which gives you a lot of restrictions on what your root can be. Namely, what do we have? It turns out, if this polynomial has a rational root, then the numerator has to divide the constant term and the denominator has to divide the leading term. Okay. Then, P must divide A naught and q must divide a n. So again, let me reiterate. Suppose you have this given polynomial. So I give you the polynomial and suppose it has a rational root. Okay. Suppose somehow magically it has a root that's a fraction, then this theorem tells you that the, the numerator has to divide the constant term and the denominator has to divide the leading term. So again, it's a structure theorem. It tells you something about the structure of roots of uh, polynomials. Now, of course, this looks like complete gibberish, so let me give you an application that maybe tells you why it's kind of useful. Because I know this is saying a lot, 
But this is again saying that there are not that many possible roots of uh, polynomials, at least rational ones. So, oh, I already have that. Um, all right, consider the following thing. Example. Let's find a root of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 14x plus 8. Now, this is not a quadratic polynomial, so you can't use a quadratic formula. So it's a little bit harder, but let's see if maybe we can apply the rational roots theorem to this. Notice, the constant term is 8, and the leading term is 1. So here, a0 is 8, and a3 is 1. Now, we never said it has a rational root, and it doesn't necessarily have to have a rational root. But here, we're kind of lucky. We'll see. So what this theorem says is, if x equals p over q, is a rational root, then p has to divide the constant term and q has to divide the leading term. p must divide 8 and q must divide 1. And again, this is super interesting because in theory, you could be like, man, there's so many different choices that could be roots of this. But this is saying, no, there are not that many choices because there are not that many numbers that divide eight. I mean, think of all the integers that divide eight. Well, there's one, but also minus one. There's two, but also minus two, plus or minus four and plus or minus 8. So there are only 16 numbers uh, that divide 8. And even better for 1, there are only two numbers which divide 1. So in other words, there are 16 choices for p and two choices for q, which in the end, if you just take ratios, that just gives you 16 choices for possible roots. So this gives us, so x, which is p over q, which again, all the possible choices here, divided by all the possible choices here, which in the end, luckily, it just gives us plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. And so all we have to do, again, if we're lucky, just take each choice and plug it into a polynomial. If we find one of them, we're done, because the problem is find one root of that polynomial. So again, let's roll up our sleeves and do that. So this was our polynomial. Let's try x equals one. So again, one plus three minus 14 plus eight. I believe that is 4 plus 8, which is 12, minus 14, that's minus 2, which is not 0. So definitely 1 is not a root. Let's take x equals minus 1. Okay. Minus 1 plus 3 plus 14 plus 8. So let's see, uh, 14, uh, 22, I believe 24, uh, 24. No problem, six more choices left. Um, let's try out two. So eight plus three times two squared, which I believe is 12, and then minus 28 plus eight. So 20 plus eight minus 28, zero, bazinga. 
So indeed, we're lucky here. In fact, two is a root. Um, and again, so that's one of the applications of the rational roots theorem. It allows us to check to find possible roots of a polynomial. And what I do want to emphasize here, we were lucky. It is completely possible that this polynomial has no rational roots whatsoever. And in that case, we, we just have to resort to different techniques, for instance. But the nice thing is, if it has a rational root, this procedure will help us find it. And the cool thing is, once you found a root, you can actually just use long division to factor out the polynomial. For instance, if you do long division here, I think in the end, what you find, let me see, is x minus 2 times x squared plus 5x minus 4. And then you can use the quadratic formula to find um, other roots of the polynomial. And last but not least, so just a little mnemonic. So I'm always confused about whether P divides A naught or P divides A N. Um, well, if you ever confuse, always just try it out with the example x squared minus four equals zero. You should find that your guesses are x equals plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. If you accidentally mix up the a naught and the a n, then you would find, I think, your guesses being plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 1 quarter. So that's not a uh, good point, right? But, um, but that's why whenever you confuse about which order, which a naught or a n to pick, try it out with this example. It should give you the correct roots. All right, so that was one application of the rational roots theorem. In the next video, I'll do another application because you can also show, uh, use it to show that numbers are irrational. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.